Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is part six of the video series uh, Salvation Through Works is Heresy. Uh, brother, you know, as we as we study the Bible, every time we look at any verse, we, we always have to keep in mind that uh, every verse has a spiritual message for us. And um, there's also doctrinal applications for the verses too. And what we're concerned with in this series is what is the doctrine for our salvation? And we've already clearly gone over that. Uh, and we know that uh, the doctrine is we are saved by the grace of God through our faith in Jesus' finished work on that cross. When we believe that His death on the cross served as a full payment for all of our sins and believe that it's finished, that belief uh, causes salvation. Uh, the, our sins are forgiven at that very moment and we receive the gift of eternal life at that very moment because of our faith. That is the doctrine uh, that we have for our salvation. Amen. Now, there's a, I, I've heard it uh, said many times from some good teachers, Bible teachers, that uh, uh, everything in the Bible is for us, but not everything in the Bible is to us. And what they mean by that is the same point we're making here, is that every verse we look in the Bible is for our learning. We will learn a spiritual lesson from everything. And we should try to apply all of it spiritually to our lives. But not everything is to us as for our the doctrine of salvation. And I, I think that's where the problem is coming in, is that uh, a lot of people are trying to apply things that do have spiritual truths for us, but they're trying to make it part of the doctrine for salvation. Yeah. So, the, another potential problem is the uh, people trying to apply verses uh, to you as a true Christian uh, when the verse is really not talking about a true Christian, it's talking about a false Christian. Uh, Jesus did a parable about the, the wheat and the tares. And the wheat is uh, the true Christian, and the tare is the false Christian. The unbeliever. Yes. Uh, it's kind of a, a pretender, a person who's either pretending to be a Christian, and they, they know they're not, and they're pretending to be one, or... Uh, they really think they're a Christian. Maybe some of the people we're talking to in this video, do you believe that you're a Christian? Uh, well, if you do not believe this gospel of salvation as, we're, as we are clarifying it in this series here, then you're not. You may believe you're a Christian, but not really be a true Christian because you're, you're not trusting Jesus Christ as Savior. When, when we trust Jesus as Savior, that means He is our all in all. Our, we depend on Him entirely for our salvation. So if, if you think you're a Christian, but you're not trusting Jesus entirely, completely, exclusively, then you're, you're a, a tear, not a, not a wheat. Yeah, what you're saying is, the, is uh, the truth, because Mormons believe they're Christians, um, but they believe in a work salvation. Mm -hmm. they, they believe they're Christians. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, and then another mistake that uh, people are making is that uh, they think a word always has the same meaning. But, you know, words do have meanings, but they, they oftentimes have multiple meanings. See, people send me verses that have the word uh, uh, lost in it or lose. And they, they, they don't understand that just because the word lose is in it doesn't mean you're losing your salvation. You could be losing any number of other things. It's not talking about losing salvation. Uh, they, they have a verse that has fire in it. They automatically think that they've got to be talking about hell. But the word fire could, could also mean uh, the, the trials and tribulations that we go through in our lives. Uh, they, talk, they have a verse with destruction or destroy. You know, they're assuming it's, you're being destroyed in hell. But <laughs> It could be your life being destroyed in for a variety of ways. So they... They are jumping to conclusions whenever they see a word, a red flag goes off, and they automatically think it's salvation uh, and hell that's being talked about. Now, uh, we, as, a, as a Christian, we said earlier that we don't want anyone to get the impression that we're 
telling people it's just okay to sin all you want, that no problem. We're not. That's not our message. Uh, we clarified earlier that uh, what the difference is between must and should, and we're telling you, yes, Christians, you should stop sinning. You know, yes, Christians, you should do righteous deeds. You should serve the Lord. There's a lot of things we should do as Christians. And if we do the wrong things, then there are consequences. But one consequence that Frank and Luke are never going to have to face, if we sin today, we never have to worry that a consequence will be losing our salvation and going to hell. But there are other consequences. Can you think of any historical uh, Bible uh, figures that... Uh, we know that are saved, but and yet they, they sinned and had consequences. Uh, David, uh, uh, David was a believer, and uh, you look at what happened uh, with him and uh, Bathsheba. You look at Lot uh, with his daughters. You look at Samson. Look at the life of Samson. Uh, look at Noah. You know he got off the boat and got drunk. Um, so there's some examples there. Mm-hmm. Well, look. Those are real. Obviously, those are uh, examples. If anybody studied the Bible much, they should be aware of it. that not only those individuals, but practically every person mentioned in the Bible has missed the mark. Uh, no matter how uh, respected they are, whether it's Moses or Noah or anybody, they, they've all missed the mark to some extent. Even the, the Apostle Paul, he said, uh, uh, I know what I'm supposed to do, and yet I don't do it. And I know what I'm not supposed to do, and yet I go ahead and do that. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. Uh, So here we have what many of us consider uh, the most uh, respected and um, greatest of all the apostles. And yet he continued struggling with this sin nature. He said, but it's not me that's doing it. It's this sinful nature that lives inside me. So if the apostle Paul, years after he got saved, continue struggling with sin had this battle going on then uh, how could you uh, Christians out there tell us that you have to completely stop sinning in order to be saved Paul, the Apostle Paul couldn't do it yeah that's uh, absolutely uh, ridiculous to lay that on somebody um, and uh, that's not doctrinal and uh, it's a uh, it's burdening people uh, um, with uh, something they can't accomplish. And, and for someone to say that they have actually, they don't sin no more, they're, mm-hmm. they're lying. Any, any street preacher or uh, video producer on YouTube here that's teaching this heresy, I'm calling you right now a hypocrite. Because you're trying to impose uh, re- religious um, uh, works on everybody else that you have not been able to perform yourself. So I'm asking you, take a good look in the mirror and you'll see a hypocrite. Now we're going to go on um, in the next video and uh, I've got a real life example to, to illustrate this point.